Welcome back, my dear students. So, on this lecture, what I want to do is I want to rename, okay, this package here just because I wanted you guys to have it, okay? So, let's rename this to uh, MongoDB, okay, like this. And once, you know, if you see a, one of these files in your reference, files and it doesn't have a no module it's just because it's just a lot of data there to be included right so all you have to do is do npm install and from the package.json you will get all this you will get whatever modules we got okay so don't worry about this no modules folder here remember that it will be created automatically with the package.json so anyway um so i want to create another folder very similar to this called mongoose okay so I'm just going to go ahead and create just a, a copy of this real quick. And I'm going to name this Mongoose like that. Just because I want you guys to. I'm just come back here. And I'm going to go to my package.json. I'm going to change the name. To Mongoose, make sure that you do that in the MongoDB one, and you can change whatever information you want there if you, you know, and you, you can do npm installed or update to update that data. Okay, so let's go to app.js here, and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna delete my Mongo client, my Mongo connection here, because we're not gonna use that, right? We're going to be using Mongoose on this one. There we go. So we got our Mongoose require there. And we got our connection. Let's make sure that it works. So node app or node man app. And it says it's connected. So we got our database connected. Now, what I want to do is I want to use a different database for this one. A different... Um, database name so let's call this mongoose okay so that way our mongodb data here and our mongoose data does not conflict okay does not this this doesn't get overwritten so we have this connection open with mongoose and we need to start creating our api meaning that we need to start creating routes so that way, when we send data uh, calls from our postman, uh, I thought I had it open here. So when we send calls from our postman, from this, the program that I told you to download in the last lecture, we are able to receive it in our application. Okay. So we could, if we wanted to use just simple Node.js routes. We are going to be using Express to create our routes, okay, our API. So I'm going to do Control C. I'm going to do npm install Express. Simple as that. Okay. So now that we have Express, we need to start requiring Express in our server and using it. But we're going to start doing that in the next lecture because I also want to create a model of our data with Mongoose. Remember that Mongoose is a ODM, Object Database Mapper, uh, Document Mapper. And I told you I was not going to say that again. And you should already be accustomed to that uh, term, right? So acronym. So we are going to require Express. We are going to create the routes using Express. And, but before we do that, we want to create a model, a definition for our data, because we don't want our data to be all over the place. We don't want uh, any fields included in our database. Even though we are the ones making the call, we want to make sure that certain data is formatted in a certain way so that everything is organized. And we're going to do that in the next lecture. Thank you so much, guys. See you then. So in this lecture, we are going to be creating a model just because we want our data to be formatted in a different way. So in a, a specific way, let's go ahead and create a directory here called models. And inside this directory, we are going to be creating a model. 
And the model that we are going to be creating is something related to our database, right? For example, if I was creating uh, a CMS, of course, the CMS has uh, different features that I want to include. Like, for example, categories, posts, messages, uh, chats, or whatever. So our models are going to have those names of those collections that we want to deal with. For example, now in Mongoose, I want to deal with a collection called users. So I'm going to create a model. And now there are different ways of actually naming your models. I like to name my models with an uppercase user and all singular. Okay. So models are usually going to be singular in most, uh, you know, languages, but you will have, you will see people writing it with a lowercase. It's up to you. However, you want to write it, depending where you come from, what specific language, but from my convention, from how I learned, I always uppercase the model just to tell that this is a special, um, file, right? I come from a PHP background, so I, we name our models with a uppercase there. So let's create a file. And now what we're going to be doing here is the first thing is installing or requiring our mongoose module. Okay. Just like this. And now we need to create a definition for our data. Okay. So we use the mongoose object and we actually use this model method. Okay. And we're going to pass a couple parameters here. The first parameter that we are going to pass that we can pass is the name of our model. What name do you want to give it? Let's say, for example, I like to name my models the same name as the database, whatever the database is going to be. Now, Mongoose is going to grab, okay? Every time we create a model and we insert data, it's going to grab the, the singular name, okay, of your model, and it's going to create a collection in plural or lowercase, okay? So I know that my collection would be users. I just put users. That's going to be now that is kind of confusing. And if you want it to be something else, you can, let's just call it user if you want. Okay. That's the same name that we gave our file here. Okay. Now I like to, like I say, I like to name it the same name as the database, what the database is going to be or, um, not a database collection, sorry. Second parameter is going to be the data definition. It's going to be an object that has keys and values, and that's how we define our data. Okay. So I'm going to say that each user is going to have a name. Now this name field is going to be an object. Okay. And this object is going to have the types of definition that I want in the data. Okay. So this key is the name that's going to have, that's going to be in the, let's say, for example, if you come from a background of MySQL, this is going to be the column It's going to be, uh, the road is going to have a row of name and the column types would be this in MySQL. But of course this would be the type string like this uppercase comma, cause this is an object. And then we have. We want to say, well, this is going to be required. So this is validation in the server in your, in your database. So for example, if you trying to insert a record and you don't insert the name, this required true is going to trigger and you're going to have some type of error and your data is not going to be inserted. So this is validating that the data has to be there before. So we have this validation here that we are, um, requiring it. Now we're saying, listen, it needs to be type string. So if it's something else, I need you to cry. I need you to complain and your data is not going to be, um, inserted. Okay. Or read or anything like that. So make sure that you are understanding this. We are formatting how we want our data in the database. 
collection, right? We also have uh, other ones like minimum length, minimum type, minimum height. We can use this guy right here. Okay, there are so many different validators for uh, Mongols. You can read on the documentation about it. So the minimum length has to be at least one character. Let's just put this, or it could be, I think for a name, four character, four is fine. Okay. Then we have things like trim. We want to trim all the white, all the stuff around, make sure that the data is clean, right? So this is just one. Now, if the user had a last name, we can go ahead and create another one. Okay. And paste it right here. And I could say last name like this. And let's just call this first name. Okay. Last name should be something very similar, right? Let's say the user was, let's create it as is active field here is active. And then is active is going to be type what? We can say number. Number. Okay. So be zero or one or something like that. Or we can say Boolean for true and false like this. But remember uppercase. Okay. So I'm just going to say number here and we can even set some type of default and we can just say zero or something like that. Okay. Again, there are many of this in the documentation. You're welcome to read it. So let's come back here and right after our definition here, we can say module dot exports and we can export if we create some type of um, the name of the model here, we can export it out, right? Now, there is another way that I use, and this is just one way of doing it. We can go ahead and do use the structure in here too, if we wanted to, like that. Now, when I create a project in the next sections, okay, I don't use this format a lot. I'm going to tell you the format that I use and that I see commonly used all the time. I just wanted to show you one way of doing it. Okay. So you would, you would go ahead and create, this is just a better, best way to understand it. Now that you understand how this works, uh, remember that we are going to be pulling this module, this file from another file that we are going to be using it. For example, we're going to be using it here in the server. Okay. Or we can use it in a separate file for our routes, but we're going to be using it in the server and later on, I'll show you how to use it in the routes, but all this stuff that we're doing here is because we're keeping things separate. We could easily go back to our server and create the model here if we wanted to, that's fine, but it's not the right way of doing it. That's why we're creating this in a separate file. And then we are putting the user or whatever definition we got here in this constant and we are adding it to our module exports object so that way we can pull it from another file now all we have to do here now is come back here and say const user and then we require our model here come back here and we say models and we come in user now we have all the definition here so now we can use the properties or objects and this behind the scenes, this uh, model has methods that we can use that Mongoose creates for us that, that has pre-built methods that, for, for example, save, um, it has, you know, remove and all that things that we can use to create data, remove data, do the CRUD basically. Okay. Now here we are using it to create. For, to format our data, how we want our data to be. And we do this by using keys and values. Okay. Simple as that. 
Now, on the next lecture, I'll show you a different way of doing it, and we'll we'll create a route to start inserting data. Thank you so much. See you in the next lecture, guys. Hopefully, you are enjoying the course. Welcome back, my dear students. So, let's go ahead and create some type of data here, and I, you know, create a database called Mongoose, and at the same time, insert some data. Just because I want to jump into doing this right away. So let's go ahead and we are already exporting this guy out from here. Make sure that if you're using this curly brackets, this is a structuring here. Make sure that you use it here as well. Okay. Like this. Okay. Now we don't need to do that. We just have one. Okay. We're not exporting any more data out of there. And all right, so this is one way of doing it. Let's go here and and start playing around with it. So we got the user right here, and we can start all of a sudden constructing a object to hold that user. Okay, we can say now one thing to keep in mind: I can use the function like this and construct the object or well, i can use a little bit of best practices in a way it's not really best practices but yeah, a lot of people use it so let's just use it and you might see me not doing it once in a while just know that when you see the new and without it you know it's the same thing here we just signify that we this is a construct right so we have in our data, we have the first name, the last name, and the active, right? So that's the type of data that we need here. We need the same names here, okay? And I'm just going to make some bogus name because I'm not creating an API yet. I'm just showing you how to use the model. And last name, make sure they are spelled the same. If not, you're going to have some type of issue. Come back here. And now is active is the last one, and I use camel case, so that that's that's why I I don't make mistakes when I'm naming my stuff. So this is a number, so it could be one or zero. And the default we said it was going to be zero. So even if we don't type it here, it should do it for us. But anyway, so now we can go ahead very simply and use the safe method, pre-built method that Mongoose offers us. Now this method, we can have a function back to us, you know, saying, hey, listen, you, um, we were able to save the data, data saved or something like that. And we can come back and say, oops, um, we have the function, okay. If error, return error or something like that. So that way application doesn't run anymore. If the data was saved, we want the data saved, right? Now let's turn our app on, no mon app, enter. And now you can see that it says connect and we got the data back here, okay? So now if we go to our what is this? The compass. We can check on the compass. Turn our GUI on so that way we can see it. I'm going to go and connect to it. And you can see that we have a collection or document here with our data. Our data was successfully inserted. Okay. Now, keep in mind that we don't have to use the GUI all the time. I just showed you how to use the GUI. Maybe in la later lectures, we're just going to use the Mongo shell. And um, you're going to see me using the Mongo shell. As a matter of fact, I'll probably create a lecture about the Mongo shell on the next lectures. Thank you so much, guys. And as you can see, we were able to use the model that we created here with uh, definition. Uh, just a quick note here. Remember that we are using these validators. For example, if the first name was not included, we put an empty space here and we try to execute this, you see that it says connected, okay? 
Now, this is giving me a warning, and let me tell you why it's giving me a warning. This warning has to do with Mongo promises. If I'm using a promise, which I'm not here, it's telling me to plug in our own promises because Mongo is, is not supporting that promise. Uh, they don't have a promise library. Before, back in the day, they did. They don't anymore. So we have to plug in our own promises library, and we will do that in the next lecture. But as you can see, let's go ahead and change the data to the as. Okay, now when we come here and we refresh, there is no data. Okay, our data is not being inputted there. It's nothing there. So let's return here some type of console.log error. And let's see if we can see that error message. Come back here. And now you can see that error. You see that? What it's saying here is first name, the validator error, path name, first name is required. Okay. And I hope you see how this works. Okay. It's saying that it's supposed to be a minimum length and that is the first name. So if I say something like Ed and I come back here, we're going to get another error here. And it says first name E is shorter than the minimum allow length. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. So as you can see, this was good. Now is active. If I don't include is active and I try to do this, it's going to get another error. But if I do, let's say Jose and I do this, it says, okay, listen, I was able to insert it. Everything went good and is active by default. Okay. It's going to be zero. Hope you've seen that. See how easy that was. Anyway, if you have any doubts, let me know and I will clear them out for you in the discussions. Thank you so much, guys, and I hope you're learning a lot. I hope you're really excited. I see you in the next lecture. Welcome, my dear students. So I hope you guys are really having an awesome day. Are you guys ready? All right, so let's do it, guys. Come on, come on. So here's the deal. In Node.js, there is a lot of way of doing things. That confuses people a lot because People that come from a background of very organized, um, you know, tools or very organized programming languages get very confused when they come here because there are so many different ways of doing things using JavaScript, right? That it's confusing, right? For example, what I'm about to show you in this lecture right here could be a little bit confusing. Now, I show you one way of exporting the model out. I'm going to show you another way just because this is the way that is meant to be in the documentation. Now, the way that you're seeing here right now, the way that I'm going to show you now is the way that I see it all the time in the documentation. So I want to show it to you. Okay. So the way we do this, you know, in, in the modern applications, and then maybe they all change it later on and let me know if they change it. I will change the course uh, as well is that we, go here from the mongoose and we export or import the schema and let me show you what i mean i'm gonna name it schema because that's the name and you can name it whatever we want because in reality we are creating a const a variable right so we export this guy this object from here okay and then instead of having this here this model i'll show you what we have we have this user and I like to name it user schema like this. Okay. That's how I, I like to name my models, uh, my schema with uppercase first word and uppercase second word. You also going to see it like this. So you're welcome to do it however you want. Okay. This is what gets really confusing in Node.js, right? There is really little organization when it comes to convention. A lot of people use many different things. I like to go, well, by what I know, how I use, how I program, you know, in all this, in all these years or how I see the documentation. Now, when I see something, in the, remember that documentation is not perfect. So you're going to have different styles involved in documentations. The original documentation, when it comes to Mongo's might have something very different from what MongoDB recommends. Okay. In some cases. So if you like to do camo case, you're welcome to use this syntax. This is what's used in the documentation, user schema. 
okay you're gonna see me doing this it's just because I'm I'm used to doing this here and I keep mo most of my applications like this and even when I work with other developers it's very easy to recognize that we're working with something special okay like a schema so this this and this are the most popular ones okay I'm gonna be using this so now that we have this schema all we need to do is construct it by doing new schema we need to initiate that like that and of course that is a function or method that you need to wrap around that there okay very similar to the model but the model we, we still have not used that we need to use that model because we need to tell mongoose that hey this is a model so the only thing that changes is that we export the whole model right here mongoose.model and of course we name the users and we need to give it a second parameter is going to be our schema so we are telling mongo listen this model here users is going to be right here so we are passing that second parameter that the definition to the to the mongoose now mongoose know that this will be my model okay again some people will use this here and even if you use this it's fine and that's very popular as well okay i name it the same name as i know the collection will be okay because i know the connection will be plural whatever my model is okay so users and I, for a fact, I know that my collection name would be that. Now our application will still do the same. As you can see, it's still doing things here. So if I go to app and I change something here, for example, I'm going to call, I'm going to use Maria and I, you're going to use Martinez, which is the last name. I'm going to go like this. And as you can see now, our database was updated. So it still works the same. It's just the way that the documentation uses it. Okay. So I didn't want to actually end this section without showing you how to do that. Thank you so much guys for, for watching this and I'll see you in the next lecture. Welcome back my dear students. So it's time for us to start creating some uh, routes to handle our API calls. Okay. So, what I want to do is I want to use Express for this and we already downloaded or and installed Express, right? So we got that module in our package.json. You can see it here. If you have not downloaded this, go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to say Express and I'm going to require it like that. There we go. And then we create, of course, the app. Okay, and we should already know this, right? We went and created a, I have a section on Express. So by the time you get here, you already know how to deal with this. And this does not go like this. It goes like this, Express. <laughs> there we go, All right? So we want to use that to post data. And our API is going to be going to users, just like that. Okay, but now before we, we do this, we need to create some type of server to listen on that specific port, right? So I here on the bottom of this, I'm gonna say app.listen and we can create a port right here. I can say port and this could be either port, whatever you want it to be, to be honest with you. I'm just gonna make it 4444 or um process dot port okay and the environment dot port there we go and this here is just a way of saying uh taking this when we take this production this environment this process dot emv in node okay is the environment okay and by default, it's going to have a port. So whenever you are hosting a Node.js application, 
by default, when you install Node.js, you have a port that you can use, okay, in that production environment. And that port depends on the platform that you're using. So we, we're saying either use the port that we have available in the environment, whatever environment that is, wherever that is, right? Or use our local environment, our local port. So the first parameter is going to be port. And of course, we have this callback function here that we can check to, to see if we are listening, right? Some template strings here by doing the little tilde. I have an ES6 course, guys. So if you want to know a little bit more about the new JavaScript syntax, go ahead and take that course. It's free, by the way. So don't worry about that. So we're going to say console. Um, let's just say listening on. And this is how you put the variables in there by the dollar symbol, the two curly brackets, and the port and the variable number inside in template strings. And this little uh, quote here is close to the escape key. Okay. Um, you press that there and that should give you that, right? So let's go ahead and run this. And of course it's still inser inserting data. We don't want it to be doing that. So uh, let's just comment this out and let's see what Noldman is saying. He say listening on port 44. Four. And as you can see here, the first thing that we see is that is listening. That's the first code that's being executed. And then we're getting the connected. Okay. Just because the database is just going to take a little bit more time to connect. So that's pretty cool. Um, we're not using that right now. Okay. So the first part is creating this, in, you know, re installing Express, requiring Express, setting up Express here. Um, and then listening to the port before we start getting into the routes. So let's start creating the routes in the next lecture. Welcome back, my dear student. I hope you guys are doing really good today. Okay. And if you're not, don't worry. I'm here to cheer you up and show you some coding in Node.js. So we have a functionality of listening to whatever request we send to port 4444. Great. So now we have this server that is listening. So now every time we visit that, we are going to see a page that is not working because we don't have nothing responding back to that, right? So we need to create, start creating routes. So right here, I'm going to start creating a route called get just because I want to have something there. So let's just put something in the root by doing this. And we are going to have, of course, the requests and the response back. We're always going to have those two there available. And we can just send, rest send. So the response, and we're going to send, uh, we can send a whole HTML page if we wanted to here using template strings, just to let you know. Okay. We're not going to do that. We're just going to say uh, root. Okay. And if I go to port 4444, localhost. Oops, that's only three fours. Now, keep in mind, guys, that I repeat myself a lot in my courses. That's just because the more I repeat myself, even if you already think you know the information, the more is going to be in your head. And it's going to bug you a little bit. It's going to frustrate you a little bit. But at the end of the day, because it's frustrating you, you're going to remember it. Okay, so I'm doing my job. And my job is to make sure that you learn this stuff. Even if you get upset with me, you're going to thank me later. You're going to say, oh my God, that instructor repeats so many times the routes. He talks so much times about this and about that. And when you're saying those things that you're so frustrated, <laughs> you're not noticing that you are actually knowing the, the things that I'm showing you and repeating myself so much. You're actually, you actually learn it just because it frustrated you that much. Hopefully you understand that. Anyway, so we're going to create a post request. Okay. We're going to create this route that is going to take a post request and it's going to take a post request going to users. And of course we have the request and we have the response here. And what we're going to be doing that there is we're going to do all this that we were doing before. So every time somebody makes a request to that route, we are going to be listening and doing some things behind the scenes, right? Right. So what I want to do is on the next lecture, I want to show you 
how to use promises because right now we're using a syntax here that it's a syntax that we don't really necessarily use um, in modern applications. What we do uh, use is promises, okay? Uh, as you can see here, we have this callback function in our save uh, method, right? So we go ahead and we execute something and we get a response back. Nowadays, we use promises, and on the next lecture, we get to that. Thank you. Welcome back, my dear students. I have a section, a couple of lectures, I believe, in my ES6 course where I talk a little bit in more in depth with promises, okay? But now, here is the documentation if you want to read more about promises, which we're going to be using in this course, okay? Here are some of the things that some of the guarantees and some of the things that you can do with promises like chaining, which you cannot do with a uh, callback. Okay. So as you can see, we can chain them on in on definitely, right. And there are a lot of ways of doing it. Now they have a whole bunch of uh, advantages. So you can see here, it would never be called before the completion of the current run. Callbacks added with a dot after the success. Da, 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 da. Read about it a little bit and learn it if you want to uh, use it properly. But now I'm going to show you how to use it properly in this course anyway. So basically, the call, promises are much like uh, callbacks with a couple more perks. Okay. Basically, we're sending uh, some data, we wait for the response, right? And we get that. So instead of using this, outdated code I don't I'm not gonna say outdated because there are some uses to it I like to use promises so instead of waiting for a callback here we can chain the promise now we can't really use a promise with mongoose yet because mongoose by default right now in this current version and I believe I'm using version 4.13 maybe you're using a later version of uh, mongoose um, it doesn't take promises. So we need to add promises to Mongoose. Mongoose used to have their own library for promises back in the day. They don't support it anymore as of this version. Maybe they will in the future. Let me know if I have to change this lecture, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add to the to this here, mongoose.promise. We're gonna add the global promise that we use for our ES sets which is a uh, global, remember this is the global object, promise, same name, same everything. And that's all, that's all we got to do for that. Come down here and start using it, okay? So instead of uh, using the callback, we're using then, okay? And we just can say save user because that's what we're going to get back. Because this then statement is like execute. Without this then here, this dot save would not work. You can need to attach some type of callback or um, the then here. Okay. So the then is like execute. And I believe you can still do it like this with the eats exec function. Okay. So we can say console.log saved user. Let's go ahead and try to use our API to save this data into the database. Right now, um, what do we got? We got Mongoose, we got one user. We got two users, Dia, Jose Diaz and Maria. No, actually Edwin Diaz. Okay, let's insert Maria Martinez and we don't have uh, Maria here, we have Jose Diaz, which is my brother. I'm joking guys. This is, I don't know who Jose is, but I'm pretty sure he's going to, he's taking my class. Anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and grab Postman. And that was my compass, by the way, our GUI for our database guys. Come on, wake up. If you're falling asleep, it's, it's, I know it's late for you, but I wake up. All right. So we're going to grab Postman. We're going to make an API request. Okay. So I'm just gonna make a post request and I'm gonna make it to um, 44, 
44, 44 posts. Let me see if that's what I got there. Uh, I believe it's users, actually. What am I doing? Users. So that's going to make a post request there. Now, once we make that post request, this is going to be created. And send. If that is our, whatchamacallit. Let me see one second. Localhost 4400. Let's make sure we have the right URL, guys. We don't want to send it to. Hold on. Um, cancel request. Let's go and paste that in. There we go. And let's do users. We need to create a new request actually. So let's, um, I'm already including some stuff here that it's preset it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all this that I got here and I'm gonna start from scratch, okay? Now, most of the time what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert data in Postman and do it that way, okay? So, it's a post request and let's see if I can. All right. Let's see if what we get when we do get. That we get, we get root, as you can see there. Now we need to do a post and I believe our data was saved already. I'm going to tell you why we don't, we're not getting uh, anything back. It's, it just keeps hanging there, but our data was saved. I'm pretty sure of it. Let me just take this down here. It was saved already. I'll show you refresh and you see it was saved a couple of times. Maria Martinez and Maria Martinez. Now it was hanging there because we don't have anything um like we don't have a refresh we don't have a redirect we're not sending a response back all we're doing is we are logging everything into the server so that's why you saw that it said there that it was sending okay so uh what we need to do is we need to send some type of response back so we can see that it, everything was good all right so i'm gonna say rest send um and then we're going to say user saved. Okay. And I'm going to say Maria two, Martinez two. We should come up with a better name, right? Uh, let's go get Postman now. Users send. And you can see that it says user saved. Okay. So now we could, if we wanted to actually use Postman, to insert data in our database and we're going to do that in the next lecture because i want to show you how to do that i want to show you how to actually bring the data from here and take it into here because right now we are we have hard-coded data we're sending a request to this and then we're taking care of everything here like we have like we have the data from somewhere else we want to actually use the data from an external source okay and i'm going to do that in the next lectures Welcome back, my dear students. I hope you guys are having a lot of fun and enjoying my courses full of errors that I actually allow to be included. And the reason why I allow this is because I want you guys to know that I'm not perfect and I want you guys to learn from my mistakes. I know some of you don't like that, but I do because you learned from my mistakes. But anyway, so let's do this. So on the last lecture, we saw that um, I was that we were creating creating a um, request a post request and it was hanging there right it was just there because we were not sending we were not sending a response from the server back to the client we were not doing that and then we later on we did that and it worked perfectly perfect but now i'm going to show you how to take data from here all right from an external source and insert it in the database like it's supposed to be but before we do that we need to actually uh, use another module, okay? 
and you've probably seen this module already. It's called the body parser. We need to install that. We need to parse post data. Um, so let's try, let's go ahead and play around with this. Okay. And see if we are able, okay. How can we take data from an, an external source and insert it in here? Okay. There are two ways of doing this. Either we can accept this in the URL parameter or we can take a post. Now, the most, the safest way of doing it is by doing a post, post data. But in order for us to do that, we need something to parse the post data. Node.js by default doesn't have that ability. We need to download some type of module. And remember, we're gonna be using this guy here to do that, okay? But we gotta tell it what type of data we, we wanna send, okay? You can see that we have a field here called form data. Okay, and that's exactly what we're going to be using. So let's come back here and download this module. That's, I wanted just to give you that in, uh, explanation here. Uh, it's called body parser, unless they come up with a better one in the future. And guys, you can do npm i to do npm install. It's the same thing. If you just see MPA, npm i somewhere, just know that they are the same. Here, as a new user, we are going to be taking the required body dot uh, first name that's going to come. But now we need to require this first. Make sure that you require a uh, body parser. Require body parser. And it's called body parser like that. Let's try to actually use this real quick. So um, let's come back here and say app use to install this in the middleware. And we're going to say body parser. Okay. And we're going to say that JSON. This is a method that is going to allow us to send JSON data to it. Okay. Now we do have another method that we can use is app.use. Let's just install it here and we can say body parser and now this here the url encoded okay method we is going to take this object that is going to be have different options okay and these options here is to either say i want when it's that standard option when it's false it could take a um, object with keys and values or when it's true, it takes any type of encoded bodies, okay? Now, we're not going to get into that. That's just a lot of technicalities here. Just know that right now, we are able to get this property called body attached to the request when we are using the body parser, okay? And... We are expecting a first name and we are also expecting a last name, right? Body uh, last name, simple as that. And of course, this is an object, so. We are expecting a active, that's optional, remember? And we can just say request body dot is active. Okay? So, now, what I want you to do, and I'm, I'm going to do this in the next lecture, but I, what, I, what I want you to do is send a request here. Find a way to send a request. And um, when you send a request, I want you to be, be feeling very happy if you've successfully created a request and get some type of data, which you should be able to get something like that. You might want to change it if you have a different result. Use it saved by me. So that way you know that that new, that new response was new, okay? So go ahead and do that. On the next lecture, we'll finish it up. Thank you so much. Welcome back, my dear students. How are you guys doing today? You guys are doing all right? Drinking a little bit of my coffee here. So are you guys ready? All right, let's, let's do it. So here is where we were last time, right? We created some of this properties here that we are getting from the request so that we're supposed to get from the request 
um, as a post data because we have installed this body parser here, right? This body parser feature that we are including in the middleware is supposed to add this body object that is going to have our properties coming from the form, from that request. Now, how is this supposed to work with Postman? In Postman, we make a post request to whatever route, okay? And I'll create some type of route here. Let me see if I have it in my HTTP. It should work like this as well. So I don't have anything. Everything is empty here. I, I was able to empty everything out. I just want to show you from scratch. So body and we keep it in the form data here, we are going to start typing our keys. First name, whatever value we want. I'm just going to name it Edwin. And the last name, remember they have to be the same as what you got in your model. Okay, I don't have to have quotes here. This is a text file. So DS, and I don't have to have is active. Uh, that's not required. As a matter of fact, Let's double check our model here real quick. And is active is not required. So if I put require and I don't send that data, then it's going to give me an, an error. Okay. As a matter of fact, I should show you how to do that. Let me go back here to app. Now keep in mind that those validations are going to show in the server. If we want to catch those validation, for example, if I send a request and the first name is not there, I have no way of catching that error. I can see it in the server, but that doesn't really help us out, right? So I can attach a catch here, catch and catch that error like that. I'm not making this up. This is how it is. Okay. And then I can do whatever I want. I can go ahead and send a status. Let's say 500 or 404 like that. And I can send the error or I can send um, user not saved because, and then I can attach the error if I wanted to. Okay. Just to keep informed, there are a lot of status codes and you can search really easily for, for them status code node or something like that. You can go to my best friend here and Google's always has really cool documentation all over the place, right? So as you can see here, here are some of the statuses that you can um, set, okay? And it's up to us to do that because we are the server. We created the server, right? So I just wanted to show you how this is done. Okay. This status function, we pass in the status number and then we send in some type of data with it. Okay. If we have an error, you can send the error too, and you can use the template strengths. Okay. So let's go back to post men. Guys, if you notice, I always try to show you something extra on each lecture. It's not just about what the lecture title says. I'm always trying to give you as much as I can, guys. I, I know you need it. Okay. So we got the last name. I'm not going to include is active active because that is by default zero. Okay. Now we're going to switch this to this actually. Let's just copy this. Actually, I forgot that we're doing this guy here. There we go. All right. That's what we want to do. And headers, this is doing it by default. It's doing that. So we just going to let it, as a matter of fact, we can just take that off. Let Postman um, decide. So I'm just going to send a request like that. It says user saved. Now let's get, let's check our compass data real quick. I just got some data there and it says four and you can see that that was successfully installed there. Let's go ahead and say Edwin uh, instructor or something like that. And that's a long word. You don't have to write it. Yeah. <laughs> Enter and or send refresh. And now you can see another document here. Okay. With the fields that we just created. 
So this is how you send some post data. Now you can send other types of data. It doesn't have to be um, URL encoded. You can come here and you can even go to the header and say content type. And you can choose whatever content type you want. Okay. Let's just put A and you can say, listen, I'm going to be sending some multi-part data or something like that. That's what I was looking for. There's a lot of ways of using um, Postman. You're welcome to, to, to look, read uh, the documentation. So that way you can uh, see how it works. And you can see the status here, it says 200. So that means everything went okay. I'm not going to go into details how Postman works 100%. I'm just going to show you how to send, how to deal with APIs a little bit and show you how to create some environments, which we're going to be doing that. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's do it right now. Let's just send, uh, save a, an environment here. And the request name, we can say, um, this is Mongoose API. Uh, post just like that you can I mean put the description here I just like to leave it like that and um, you can create a folder if you like um, I would just create a collection okay and my collection could be whatever I want it to be okay um, let's just say mongoose here Okay. And enter. And now you can see the collection there and the API. Now let's come back here real quick. Let's rename this and let's just call it post. Post. Um, there we go. Users. And this is a post request. You can do it like that if you like. There we go. Enter. And now you have a post request. So every time you want to run it, you can go ahead and run it. And you can go to that specific request. Okay. Anyway, I'll show you some of this, uh, some more of this later on on other lectures. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next lecture. Welcome back, my dear students. So. In this lecture, what I want to do is I want to be able to create another API so that we that way we can start fetching the data that we have in a database, right? That would be nice. So let's start playing around with that and let's do it. Okay. So we have this post here. And let's just make sure that we Create this right here. Now we're gonna get we're gonna do a get request because we're trying to do go by the CRUD. So we create read, okay? And now we're just gonna do a get request. And they could be they could have the same name as long as the request is different. Okay. And let's do request and the response. And now we need to loop, we need to grab our user. And we need to find something. So remember that Mongoose has methods that we can use to manipulate our data. So I can say user find one. This is to find a specific, um, not record, but document or record. You can call it record if you want. But if I want to find all, I can just pass a empty object here and say, well, use my promises. And then I can say uh, all the users will come back to this. And now this is not, I'm not making this up. This is how it works. You find, you pass that empty because you don't really want to put some, any constraints. You just want all the data back. And then we execute that. Okay. And then we can just go ahead and send that. Press that send. And we send those users here like this. Okay. Simple as that. So let's go back and see what we get when we try to fetch that. Let's go and say get, and we're not going to change anything here. Um, body, headers, results. 
let's go and actually let's all add a new one let's just go back and let's add a new tab here and it's gonna be a get it's gonna go to the same we're not gonna have any headers or any bodies or anything like that and we're gonna send and now you can see all the data okay you see that we have this array of objects okay and they come in order as you can see they all come in order and this is how you can fetch data now our api is working beautifully remember that we don't always have to send it to uh, send the data we can do all the things with it this is just for me to show you how this works okay you can send that and you can also remember that to you can put a uh, some type of status you can even send your status if you wanted to you can send even though we got the status here it says 200 you're welcome to actually include the status if you want to a lot of people do that status just to let everything everybody know that that works and we can say users here okay and now same thing okay but now postman remember that postman is the one doing this for us perfect so thank you so much for watching guys and this is how you make a get request using postman we are getting through our api the next one would be let me see we are creating reading and the next one should be update so it should be pretty fun why don't you try to do that yourself i know i know it's kind of hard and i'll show you how to do it in the next lecture take care guys hi welcome back my dear students so on this lecture here we're going to continue with the crud create read and update is the next one now this is just a little bit harder than the rest of the apis that we are creating now we are following conventions uh, with rest apis we are um, using a very good conventions here and um, we need to stay on track so we could easily create a route a get request that will update anything in our database that we can even create a, a get request that will update uh, that will create that will fetch data that can do anything and uh, you know we don't have to really use these verbs that i'm using right here like right now we got this get request to get data to fetch data we got this post request we can do everything we post if we wanted to okay or everything we get uh remember that the, the, what we're doing here can be done anyway all right unless all right you are receiving everything on the url or you are receiving everything in the form uh, it really doesn't matter uh, what matters is what we do here but because we're respecting best practices we're using um, names, uh, verbs, okay? Like get, post, put, patch, or delete. And in this lecture here, we're gonna talk a little bit about patch. There is patch or put, and I don't know if you saw that in the Postman. So let's go back to Postman real quick. And let me show you, let me show you that. Uh, if I can get it, that would be nice. So here, if I click on here, you can see that it says put or patch. Now, let me explain to you the differences. When you put something, you need to specify all the fields that you have in your model um, with Mongoose, okay? And this is just uh, in general. Every time you send a put request, you need to replace all the data. When you do patch, you can just say, listen, I just want to patch the first name. I don't, I don't, and then you don't need to send the rest. Okay, so when you pat want to patch something, just send the data that you want to patch. You don't have to go ahead and, re and send everything else. Since we just have one field, which is name, that's exactly, that's the only field we got, right? Actually, we have a couple. Okay, we can send a patch request for first name if we wanted to. Okay, so that's super easy to do. What we, we can do is go say patch. If I can spell this, that would be nice. And then here is where we do the trick, right? We tell 
um, a route, the, well, first of all, we need to create the route. Sorry about that. I was getting ahead of myself. So <laughs> we first say, well, we want the users, but we want an ID. And this is a placeholder here, colon ID. Okay. We already talked a little bit about this, right? There we go. There I am repeating myself, but I, I'm ho hopefully you appreciate that. And we can access that ID very simply by uh, saying something like, and let's just create a, a an ID here and say request params that ID. We have the ID right here. Okay. That ID is not going to change, so we can create a constant if we want it to. Okay. So now here's the deal with uh, Mongoose, we can go ahead and access the user. Okay, and say find by ID, okay, or find one and then pass. There are many different ways of doing this, okay? Find one and then you can say that and then pass the ID right here. You see that the same ID, okay? And once we find one, then we can start to do the update if we decide to. So here the first parameter is we're passing that query and then the second parameter is what we want to do with um, updating it, right? Now, I wanna use one here called find and update. Let's call find uh, by ID and update, okay? And here I'm going to be using the operator, the update operator set. And then we are going to be setting the name. And then that's just another object here, setting the name to whatever comes from the request, right? Um, right now, Let's just create a different name here. Let's just call this um, Edwin and update it. Usually this comes from a form or something, right? Get it from the form. Sorry about that. Let's just get it from the form request that body. We can do that request on Postman. I forgot I was using Postman and the name and here of course we just use that the name even though we we're using the same thing here okay now there is another parameter here that we can pass before we we go is that if we want to return and this is something i forgot to tell you if we want to return some type of data um we could request to Oops, sorry about that. Let me see, I got one parameter here. Oh. This parameter here, we can set this to new. And when we say true, what we get in return is the new uh, updated object, okay? Back in the Mongo side, MongoDB side, let me show you real quick. And that's something that I forgot to mention. Let me open this up real quick. Here, I paused the video because it took me a little while to find it. Um, let's just uncomment this so that I can show you. Here is simple. We create another parameter here and we send return. And let me see if I can find it in my IDE. All right, and hopefully I remember is return original. And we can set this to true here, I mean false. So that way, when we get back, and there we go again, me messing up with this. It's actually here. This is where we put that, okay? So, when we said this third parameter here that we take is a re object with the key return original false because 
what we want to see in the console here is the new uh, updated object okay so you're welcome to change that I just wanted to give you that knowledge okay let me just do control Z pull everything back like it was let's continue with our lecture so this new true is just a little different but it does the same thing okay so we're getting basically uh, the new updated object here okay simple as that so let's come back here now that we're done with that we attach a then let's just attach it on the next line here and we say saved user okay come back here and we can send a response and we can say user saved or something like that okay let's test this real quick so we need to send the ID of that specific user hopefully this works the first time if it doesn't it doesn't matter um, let's come back here well we have it on patch already but this was a get let's create a new request called patch okay and we're just gonna say first name and that's the only thing we got there and let's just say um, uh, Monica okay let's go back let's go back to our application I noticed that I call it name and it's supposed to be first name and this is supposed to be first name too here okay and there we go okay let's go back here to post uh -huh. just double checking okay let's go back here to post and we got a new tab going here and we have that request now what we don't have is the ID right so we need to send that ID and we're expecting that ID on the URL so I'm gonna, I'm gonna come here I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna pass the ID of one of these guys so the first one this with the ID of 38 3 Apple 8 should change okay to Monica enter and now it says user saved by patch let's go back here to our get request and let's send it again and you can see now that that is changed and we only changed the first name as you can see one thing that I wanted to keep you aware of it's that the reason why we're using this find by ID and update here is so that we don't have to actually query our database like this we can just pass the ID okay now and if I have a I change this um, <clears throat> I don't know if I did this before back in another lecture I probably haven't but anyway disregard that so th the reason why we have this like find by ID this method so that we can pass the ID right here like this okay so we don't have to do that you know send the object or anything like that it works the same but of course it's easier to do it like this and of course you can go ahead and create this and you don't have to create all that there as well now I like to make it just clean like this so let's go and do this again like that and let's go back to post okay to do a patch here and let's just send that request and you can see it says user saved by patch again okay so in the next lecture um, we'll continue one thing that I want to do here just before this is over and as a matter of fact let's do it in the next lecture and that is setting different environments just because we want to we already have post here so I already showed you how to do that but on the next lecture we'll do that and we'll continue with the next uh, method or the next part of the CRUD which is update and which is the same thing
okay, as patch. It's basically the same thing. But remember, patch is when you want to just patch something, where you just want to update one part of your fields. And put is when you want to replace the whole thing. So when, you, when we use put, we make sure that we have all the data. All the data is being replaced. Anyway, see you in the next lecture, guys. Welcome back, my dear students. So it's time for us to start creating uh, the put route uh, API. So I'm going to grab Postman here. I'm just going to create a request real quick. So let's go and create this request. And let's go and duplicate. And I'm going to rename this to something like uh, put. I forgot to put that in the patch little hyphen right here okay so that's basically the same thing but make sure you save it now is put request basically the same thing guys same thing but we're gonna add the last name here and Monica put um, Monica last name I just gonna it's not Monica Let's just put first name here. Okay. I'm not going to send the request because we don't have that route yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create a, make sure that you comment this out if you're going to use the same route name. And the same route URL, I mean. And we're going to say something like put, right? Now we can use this, right? What do you think we're going to get if we do that? Well, come back here and we send it and it says, Hey, it was saved. I'm going to grab my compass GUI and I come here and Monica first name and he left the last name. Let's come back here. Of course we left the last name because we were not, we did not get the last name. You see, these things would do the same thing guys. It's just that by following convention best practices, we create either a patch request or a put request. But once the data is in here, you can do this anything you want. Okay. We are following conventions. We're following best practices. And that's why we have to name it like this. Okay. Some of these things may uh, do different things behind the, uh, the, the, the scenes, you know, and depending on which, you know, programming language you're using, which, uh, API you're using, it might work a little bit different, but the concept is all the same. When you are have the patch, you're patching, and when you do put, you're putting something new, right? Uh, replacing it. So anyway, um, so we basically do the same thing, but I want to show you another way of doing the put request, okay? So we're going to be placing the last name. First of all, we let's fix this real quick, and we're going to say last name right and we come here and we say last name and last name and now let's go to a postman send that request again okay now let's go to compass and let's refresh and you can see that that's there now okay all right pretty cool stuff Let's go ahead and learn to do this in a different way. Okay, I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it down here. I told you in Node.js, there's so many different ways of doing things, especially when um, there are so many different, uh, with JavaScript, right? Uh, especially when there are so many different modules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all that out and I'm going to use find one and this is going to take the uh, query and of course the id and once i find that specific id i'm going to bring it down here like this uh i mean that specific document i'm going to bring it down i actually have the um let's just do it from scratch here then we bring down the um what is the, the user and we start saving that data. We say user dot and we say first name and we say, hey, um, we're going to get this first name from the form. 
here. And um, we're going to get the last name. Like this. We don't need that in there. So as a matter of fact, let's do a little cleaner. Take that in there and just put it right here. Okay. Look at that. Now, once we have that, we we got to go and say, well, I want you to save because the user is not saved. And then I want you to come back and say user saved. And now that's going to bring this the user that was saved back to us. And we can say rest.send. And then we can say user saved there. Okay. Now let's go back and see what can how we can do this, how we can send a request. So we already know how to do that, but I'm just gonna grab any ID here. I think I'm gonna grab, let's just make another request to get some new data. I got Maria Martinez right here, and I'm gonna grab that ID and I'm gonna go to the put request URL, paste that in there, and I'm gonna send that request. And as you can see, we have that um that data back. Now we're not getting that user save data. Let's go back here. Let's see something. Actually, we are getting that. Let's let's change this. And let's put new and see if that's the right data. Send. And you can see that yes, that is the correct data. Let's come back here. And I want you to look at the difference of this two approaches. Okay? Again, we could we could have minimized this and put this inside here, but I just wanted to create some type of variables for it. Okay, but look how many steps we saved by doing it this way, right? Find by ID and update. You can just put everything there inside this function or this method instead of bringing down the user, accessing each of the properties of that user. All right, and remember these properties are being, uh, we're getting this from the database, okay? So whatever fields we got in the database, that's what we get back here. Well, we gotta make sure that we know the fields, right? We can, of course, do a console log and, and, and log the user to the console, and that way we can see the properties and then assign them. But of course, if you're creating the application, you already know the properties. So you see, we bring the user, access the property and assign a new value to it. And then we grab it, and because we are using Mongoose, we can save that data. Okay, of course we can use a callback, but of course, why use a callback when you can use a, a then function? Remember, if something goes wrong, you can always attach the catch here to learn what your issue was. And this will give you more information about it, okay? Just like that, if something goes wrong. Anyway, Thank you so much, guys. I hope you learned a lot in this lecture here. And I, it was really exciting to show you something new. Um, and um, God bless and uh, have a wonderful day. May the universe uh, be your guide to a successful future. Uh, may your God, if you believe in God, help you in everything in life. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next lectures. Welcome back, my dear students. You guys are ready? All right, let's do it. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is remove something from the um, database. So how can we create a delete request? Well, super simple. I'm going to, and if you saw that, what I did was to copy that put request that we did on the last lectures and we paste it in here. And I'm just going to call this delete. It's very, basically... We're almost doing the same thing. We, we need to find that record or that collection or that uh, document, right, in the database. And we need to do something with it. Now I'll show you how to do this. This is very easy, okay? Once you can do it very similar to this, once you find that document, you can go ahead and call a delete method on it, or you can just, do it from here. Find one, and what do you think the name is going to be? Find one, 
and come on guys look it up in the documentation let me just delete this from and do it let's do it from scratch okay so I'm gonna say user dot and we can even use remove let's just do something real quick let's find that user and once we find that user why don't we just call the user remove just to show you that this can be done okay just like that just to show you one way of doing it and then I'll go ahead and show you the other way let's go to the postman real quick here and let's duplicate this and let's um, well let's rename it to delete oops <laughs> excuse me I believe mongoose has a remove instead of delete method <coughs> if my memory serves me correctly sorry about that again here we go we're gonna save it now we found that document which is this guy right here Monica first name and now we need to remove it let's send a delete request and see if that works let's uh, first of all let's go and make sure that we are responding back so once that user is removed, we can say resend, send. Well, let's come back here and we attach a then call uh, user removed. And then we're just going to say cont, uh, rest that send uh, user removed. It would be nice if we can just attach here if it does say that if it gives us the information let's see what this method does guys there are so many different methods that they use that it's impossible to know all of them you can know a couple but if you code like me in different uh, platforms and different languages and tools and uh, different things you're going to forget okay so let's just make that delete request and we got some issues okay let's come back here and see what what the issue was on handle promise rejection type error user remove is not a function so it looks like uh, user removed it's not working 100 percent okay um, we found a user and why this is might not be working is because instead of find we got to do find one okay let's uh, come back here and try that again all right and send and now it looks like it's working all right so now if we go back to get we're not going to be able to find this id if i'm not mistaken i'm going to refresh i'm going to send another request and that id is not there okay so make sure that instead of passing find which is going to find all the documents you want to find one okay and then you can call this method like this okay that's one way of doing it let's go ahead and see another way now you might be asking yourself, okay, Edwin, you show me a couple of different ways of doing this. Which way is the best way? Well, in some cases, you're going to have to use something like this, depending on your application. In some cases, you're going to have to use something like that. I like to use this one. It's very practical. It's very easy to use, but you're going to see me using something like this once in a while. Okay. I switch it up because I don't want to forget what I'm learning. And it really, if you are using this type of syntax, make sure you stick to it through, throughout your whole application. You don't want to confuse any other developers. Anyway, uh, we delete. We only got this one. So we found the document and we applied another method in there. And then we can save some, some time by using find one. I believe it's find and remove. Let's see. Find and remove like that and once it finds that and remove we can just attach a user removed here and we can say res.send and um, let's do uh, template strings user and let's just do um, user removed that first name 
removed. Let's just call it first right here. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. Uh, if I am, I'll fix it. And I like to leave lectures like this where I make mistakes or I forget to include something because when I fix it, it gives you a really good insight on what you could, what you're doing wrong when you are creating, uh, making mistakes. Okay. Again, it's just the way I teach. Okay. Let's go ahead and try to do this. So let's create Let's grab another ID here real quick. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. Remember, there are so many different APIs, uh, methods and stuff that you can use that is overwhelming. Let's go to users and I'm gonna try to delete that. This one that says 79 and here, find and remove is not a function you see. So that's not the method. So let's go and say find by ID. Okay, let's do something like that. Find, I know this is long, but I know it's one of them. Find by ID and remove. Okay, and that should give me something. That has to work. Okay, so let's go back here. The best part about this is that you keep trying and trying until you get it. Whoa, we finally got it, guys. Good job, good job if you were following me. So let's go back to get, and if we send that request again, you see that that ID, that is not there. Okay, of course, if we found it, let's see if this works like this. That would be nice just to put the ID there, right? This is how you find stuff, guys. Listen, I don't know 100% of everything, 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 everything. I am, I don't know. There are new things coming out all the time. You know, the documentation is always updating things. And there are some things that you might know now because you are studying this and you maybe you go into death and you go into the documentation and reading like a maniac while I'm developing in another language, right? So, you know, the best thing to do is to try things out. Hey, Edwin, and then you might ask me, hey, Edwin, do you know if this works? Um, sometimes when I get questions like that, I'm like, okay, did you try it? Right? No. Why are you asking me? So that I have to go sometimes and try to see if it works because I don't know everything, right? I don't know. So try before you ask and try it a hundred times, okay, before you ask. That way you learn more. I'm going to try to remove this guy here to see if it works like this, right? So let's go back to the lead and let's see if we remove it, right? Enter. Mm, it looks like it was removed. What do you guys think? Maria number two, you are out. So it does work, right? So that's the whole reason why we use find by ID and remove. So that way we don't have to put the whole object with the uh, underscore ID in there. Okay. So there is another one. There's so many different removes. Um, this one, I believe is called remove, believe it or not, uh, remove. Let's see if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then we just pass the ID that needs to be removed. Don't ask me why this works. Um, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Let's delete this Edwin here. Let's delete this one. I don't like this one. Let's come back here and let's see if it works and and enter and look at that it worked huh there's so many to remember guys so many that we you're gonna forget one so the best thing to do is practice practice and practice okay now i'm gonna do com command z because i want to leave this like this find by id and remove actually it was fine there. <laughs> we got one above. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy this lecture. And if you have any questions, go ahead and ask it in the discussions. I'm here to serve you. It's my job to answer your questions related to our course. And if I can help you in anything else, please send me a private message. I'm here for you. Thank you so much, guys. See you in the next lectures.